One is atoms and molecules, and the other one is the structure of atom. So let us start with the atoms and molecules. So in the just the chapter before we searched for we were looking for pure substances and impure substances and we thought which substances are pure and which substances are impure so which substances do we call them to be pure what are the substances that we call as pure Yes, what are pure substances and impure substances? Pure substances are like, um, they're only made out of like one, uh, one specific like uh, mm -hmm. atom, when I guess. The, when all the, particles are, when all the are, particles are similar in their properties, when all the constituting particles they are similar, then we call that substance to be pure. Mm -hmm. So the discovery of the atom, it went along with the pure and impure substances at the search of which substances are pure and how pure can they be. Actually, we were searching for what the matter around us is made up of, what everything around us is made up of, so that we can call it pure or impure. Okay, then what are impure atoms made out of? I mean, substances made out of. So that was what we went on, that what the substances are made up of. Okay. So here, if we look for the purity of the substance, when we are looking for the purity of the substance, we see a number of things. Okay. So pure substances. If you say pure substances are the substances, pure substances are the ones okay. what are the pure substances? So pure substances are the ones which are made up of which are made up of similar types of particles. Similar types of particles. So those substances, we call them to be pure. For example, if you're sugar, so all the particles of the sugar, they are similar. We call them to be pure. If there is something a sand, so the particles of sand will be different from that of sugar. Okay, so that will become impure. Now, again, we went into the depth that can be called uh, sugar to be pure. Okay, So it was found out that sugar itself, it is made up of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. Okay. Sir, can we write sugar as CHO then? No, it is written as C6H12O6. Sir, why? Because Six the ratio, carbon. yeah, because the ratio in which the uh, atoms of carbon and hydrogen are present, that is this ratio. Okay. Okay. The atoms they are present in the ratio of six ratio twelve ratio six, but do we so have how many for sugar, or is it the same for everything? For what? Is it the same ratio for uh, most of the, um, most of the, uh, is the ratio same for everything or is it just like different for sugar? How do you find that ratio? How do we find that ratio? So we, we are moving to everything, how we find the ratio. Okay. So your sugar has this, this is your glucose which is a form of sugar, C6H12O6. Okay, then C12H22O11. 
this is the sugar that you are eating. Okay, the sugar that we use in the tea. So that is your C6H12O6. C6H12O6, this is your glucose. It can be a similar formula has fructose also. So we are not moving into the detail what is their formula, what structure. First, we look of their purity. So when we found out that the sugar itself, it is made up of different types of substances. So that means if we look for sugar, when we are calling sugar to be pure, then now we will say that carbon is pure than sugar. Am I correct? If sugar is made up of C6H12O6 or C12H22O11, so then I will say that this carbon is pure than sugar. Oh yeah, carbon will be purer than sugar because that's what sugar is made out of. Yeah, right? that's what the sugar is made up of. So carbon, hydrogen and oxygen they are and elements. So elements, they are the purest form. Elements or atoms if we look for Atoms are the purest substances. They are the purest form of matter. Atom is the purest form of matter. So, atom is the purest form of matter, right? That means you can, purest form of matter, that means you cannot break it down further. For example, we saw glucose. So, glucose can be broken down further into carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. Okay. So, uh, that means atom here, atoms, they are the purest form. They cannot be broken down further. We cannot yeah, break down atoms. Can be broken down into protons, neutrons and electrons, right? But protons, neutrons, and electrons, they cannot exist independently. Oh. You, can, you cannot have an independent existence of proton. You cannot have an independent existence of neutron or electron. Their life is very short. If you find an independent electron, so its life is very short. It will decay out. Similarly... Like seconds or nanoseconds yeah so their life is very small so that is why we do not consider them to be independent particles independent particles are the atoms which can which can exist independently okay so atoms are the purest form of matter they can exist independently and they cannot be broken down further okay. so we found that there are different types of atoms out there. There are different types of atoms. So what were elements then? These were atoms of similar type. Atoms of similar types. Atoms of similar types were elements, were called elements. For example, let's say here you have different types of atoms. I, I make here different types of atom. Let's see. Okay, let this be one. Wait, sir, how atoms of similar types are called elements? So, okay, gold just... is an element, right? So, how is it similar to atom? Like, is it like a compound of atoms that are called element? No. A compound of atom is not called an element. Just wait. It's like this. So, atoms of... Just... Okay. What you have there are different types of atoms. Okay. So like consider here there are uh, these atoms, I mark them as one. 
one one. Okay. There are these atoms which I mark as two. There are some atoms which I mark as three. There are some atoms which I mark them as four. Some which I mark them as five. So here we observe that there are different types of atoms. Okay. And as you can see here, I have visualized them with the help of colors. Right? They are different in their color. And in their atomic mass, their structures, their properties. Right? So atoms are, if the atoms are similar in their properties, if they have similar masses, if they have a uh, if the atoms are having similar mass, if they are having a, a similar properties, then we call them, we call those atoms to be atoms of the same element. Okay. Just wait for a minute. Okay, so am I audible? Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay. So see here, as you can see, I have visualized the different types of atoms by different colors. So let's say you have an atom, you have this atom, you have an atom of this red color, you have atoms of the color blue, you have atoms of the color green. Okay, here I have just represented them with the symbols. Okay, so these were the different types of atoms which are present here. So let us say this atom which I had marked as one, so it has some mass M1. It has some chemical properties. Similarly, this one too, it also has some chemical properties and mass as M2. These, these which are marked as three, they have some mass as M3. Marked four, they have some mass as M4. Marked uh, five, they have some marks as M5. So we saw here that all these atoms, okay, they are having their different masses. They are having their different properties, okay. So those atoms which are having their similar masses, they are having their similar properties, we call them as elements. Okay. For example, if we talk of gold, okay. So gold is an element and there can be different elements of gold. There can be different atoms of, uh, there can be too many atoms of gold. Okay. If you take a material which is made up of gold, okay. So that gold will contain too many atoms or all the atoms will be similar and which will be gold. So are you getting uh, what are elements and what are atoms? Wait, sir, could you say the previous point again? Okay, see. What I call as an element, let's say this one is your gold. Okay. So what element I observe, I observe this complete metal. I have taken this sheet of metal. I call this to be the element gold. This is the gold. It is the purest mm -hmm. form. Okay. It contains a number of atoms of gold. Okay. There are too many atoms of gold in this. So a collection or the uh, uh, atoms which are similar in their structure and properties, they are characterized as an element. Oh, okay. So a bunch of gold atoms are characterized as gold. Gold? Okay. Similarly, if you collect the atoms of uh, silver, so the element we call them as silver. Okay. What about mercury, sir? <coughs> Mer In the, even if it be mercury, so again the same thing, whatever it be. But it's a liquid, right? Yeah, so it is also made up of atoms. If it is a liquid, if it is a gas, then also it is made up of atoms. Okay. Okay. So this is uh, clear to everyone about the different elements and atoms.
Okay. So let's see. Atoms, uh, there can, they, uh, if you take the atoms of different elements, they are different in their properties. If you take the atoms of similar elements, they are similar in their properties. Okay. So, like we can find, uh, we have the element sodium. We have the element potassium, hydrogen. Okay. So sodium, potassium, hydrogen, calcium. So there are a total of 118 elements. In this way, you have a total of 118 elements. And each element has a number of atoms in it. I would like everyone, Aman, Rikshit, Pranaya, and Siddhisri, everyone will turn on the camera. If anyone is having any problem in turning on the camera, <clears throat> please uh, inform in the group. Okay. So the camera should not be off at any time. If anyone is having any problem, inform in the group. Abhinav, if you are having any problem, just inform in the uh, feedback group. We'll look into it. Okay. Sir. okay. So see, <laughs> we have seen that there are a number of elements. And these elements in the older times, they were represented by some symbols. There were certain symbols by which they were represented. Okay. So uh, in the higher studies, maybe they were represented by those symbols. But nowadays, uh, the, their symbols, they have been made easier with the help of their names. And generally, we take their Latin names. For example, the sodium has a Latin name, natrium. Okay. So it's a symbol. Uh, currently that we study is Na. Potassium, it has its symbol as K. We will search for it. Uh, what is its Latin name? So that is the name and either it is the first letter or it is the combination of first and second letter. Then yeah. hydrogen. Yeah? You have seen it's Kallium. Kallium? Yes, sir. Okay. So maybe I'm not sure. It's calcium you are saying. Then hydrogen, it's uh, written with the symbol H. Calcium is written with symbol Ca. So in the similar way, all the elements, they are represented with these symbols. So we have 118 symbols. Out of this, you should be able to at least memorize the first 20 elements, right? Hydrogen, helium, Lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon. <clears throat> then after this you have sodium, potassium, cal calcium, magnesium. It's magnesium, aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, argon, then potassium and calcium. So this is your one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Sodium is at number eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, 
and 20. So you should be able, uh, you should be able to remember all the in the order, okay, in this order along with their numbers. Like if I say you lithium, so you should be able to recall that lithium has a lithium is at number three. Abhinav and Chavan, uh, you have no, neither informed in the group. No, and, sir, I just keep the room so I turned it off for a bit. Okay. So, Abhinav? Sir, uh, once can I leave and join? I'll check just. Yeah, leave and rejoin. Just check it out. Sir, what is 14th one? 14th one is silicon. So, sodium, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, argon, potassium, and calcium. <clears throat> so, these are the first 20 elements. They have been arranged in the order of their increasing atomic numbers. Okay. We will talk of atomic number just now. But these are some symbols of that. You have some other symbols also. Like for, uh, if you say for mercury. So what is the symbol for mercury? G. H G. Okay. Symbol 14. It is N. Okay. Symbol for zinc. What is the symbol of zinc? Zn. 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 Okay. Then symbol of uh, gold? AU. AU. Symbol of silver? AG. 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 Okay. And what this I stands for? So iodine. Iodine. Very good. So in this way, you should be able to memorize those symbols. These are the certain other symbols. Okay, what is this PB? Um, so, uh, lead. Lead. Okay. Its Latin name is plumbum. The Latin name of silver is argentum. You do not remember, you are not required to remember the Latin names, but uh, you should remember their English names and their symbols. Okay. And uh, what is this? Uh, Only the first 20 are required, right? So, yeah. Only the first 20 are required. Right? First 20 are required. These are also required. But first 20, they are required in this in their order. They are required okay. in, their, in the same order in which they are. That means you need to remember their number. Like if I say you boron, so boron is at number 5. Sodium is at number 11, aluminium is at number 13, silicon is at number 14, chlorine is at 17. So in this way, if I ask you which is the element at a number 19, so that is potassium. The element at, at number 20 is calcium. So you have to learn it like this only hydrogen, helium, lithium, helium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon. Then sodium, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, argon, potassium, and calcium. <laughs> then uh, you will also find certain symbols or certain help to remember them. Okay, you can search for the certain uh, those tongue twisters which are there, which can be used to run, uh, learn them. Okay. So see, barium. Its symbol is BA. Okay. Cobalt. What is the symbol for cobalt? Cobalt. CO. Anyone who knows the symbol of manganese? Sir, it's MN. MN. Manganese is MN. And MG is magnesium. Okay. Iron? FE. FE. Okay, so iron has the symbol Fe. Okay, its other name is ferrum. Okay. Latin name is ferrum. So iron and 
can you think of any other element which have you know and we have not listed over here copper copper okay very good cuprous cu cuprous cu so and, bromine. and bromine bromine br so gallium sir gallium sir einsteinium indium einsteinium okay they are there are many gallium g platinum pt yeah, so these are some of the names which you should know that yes, these are the elements. They are the they are the purest forms. Okay, so these are the elements. Fine. Mercury, tin, zinc, gold, silver, iodine, lead, barium, cobalt, manganese, iron, copper, bromine, gallium, platinum. These are some of the elements which have been listed over here. As I told you that there are 118 elements, but you need not learn all of them. You should be able to learn Sir, just one. By the end of high school, we'll remember all of them. Yeah? By the end of 12th grade, we should know all of them, though. Yeah. No, each one, you should just know their symbols and names. You From the symbol, you should be able to read out their names. Okay. But uh, the before ones, they should be remembered the symbols, names, and their uh, number also. Okay. So, now, since we just saw that all the atoms, they are the purest form of, uh, purest form of matter. So, these atoms, they recombine. Atom of one element, it combines with the atom of another element. Okay. So, atoms, they combine by the transfer of electrons. So, atoms combine with other atoms atoms combine with other atoms to form molecules. Okay. So atoms of uh, different elements they combine together, or even the atoms of same element they combine to together to form molecules. And whenever atoms combine, they always combine in a fixed ratio by mass. This is also an important point that atoms always combine. Atoms always combine in a fixed ratio by mass. Fixed ratio by mass. For example, uh, if you have one hydrogen, so one hydrogen combines with another hydrogen to form H2. Now, these were the atoms. This is a hydrogen atom. This is also a hydrogen atom. So, two hydrogen atoms, they join together to form a hydrogen molecule. This is a hydrogen molecule. Okay. In the similar way, a hydrogen molecule can combine with oxygen molecule to form water. So the ratio for a hydrogen atom and an oxygen atom is 1 is to 8. Uh, the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen or oxygen to hydrogen? Hydrogen to oxygen, I think. No, then you are wrong. See, it is the ratio of their masses. Oxygen has the mass of 16. Okay. So, oxygen has mass 16 and hydrogen has mass 1. So, there are two hydrogen which are present. Oh, then it's oxygen to hydrogen. Okay. So, oxygen to hydrogen ratio will be 8 ratio 1. So oxygen and hydrogen, they are present in the ratio of 8 ratio 1. Okay. So 
So this is your water in which we have hydrogen and oxygen combining in the ratio 8 ratio. Then if you look at a carbon dioxide, so carbon dioxide, it is also a molecule. It is formed by the combination of atoms of carbon and oxygen. Okay. So carbon atoms, they have a mass 12. Oxygen has a mass of 16. So 16 into 2 is 32. So the ratio of carbon and oxygen, it is 12 ratio 32. If you simplify it, you get 3 ratio 8. So carbon and oxygen, they are present in the ratio 3 ratio 8 in a molecule of carbon dioxide. Okay. Uh, can you find out the ratio of elements, uh, ratio of the masses in uh, let's say SO2. What is the ratio of the masses of sulfur to oxygen? Yes, uh, calculate what will be the ratio of the mass of sulfur to the mass of oxygen. Sir, is it 1 is to 1 by any chance? We are not getting them. 1 ratio? 1 is to 1 by any chance. Okay. Sir, one ratio one. One ratio one. As sulfur has atomic atomic mass of 32, oxygen has a mass of 16, but there are two oxygen atoms. So you will find them in the ratio of Not one ratio 30, one. 30. It will be in Sir, the ratio. But if you don't know the atomic mass, you cannot solve it. Right? Yeah, so that is why I told you, you need to, and we will remember come to remember. Slowly we will remember. So that is why I told you. you Find out the mass. Yeah, you need to remember these up to 20. Okay. And if you remember them. But course, sir, sulfur's atomic mass is 32, right? Yeah. Um, But only one sulfur is given there. So, so shouldn't it be 16? No, this 16 is the atomic number. The atomic masses are just double it or nearby. For example, helium has an atomic mass of 4. This is atomic number. Okay. Carbon, has a, carbon has atomic mass of 12. Nitrogen 14, right? Nitrogen 14. Oxygen 16. Okay. But fluorine, fluorine has 19. Why? Dot 18. Why? Uh, we will see it later on. But in this way, the, it will give you some idea of uh, how you can find out the atomic numbers and atomic mass. Okay. Okay. So, like magnesium has atomic mass uh, 24. Okay. It has atomic mass 24. Aluminium has Can atomic you mass. Tell me all the elements which don't have proper atomic masses that are doubled in uh, the first 20. See, uh, don't move. Uh, when you are learning then, most probably if such questions are given in your exams, uh, you will be given with the atomic masses. Right? You will be given with them. But still, if there is any confusion, so just a few of them should be learned for your knowledge. Otherwise, these values of atomic masses, they will be given. Like atomic mass of chlorine is 35.5. Uh, atomic mass of sodium is 23, not 22. So, they will be, if they are required to learn, if you are required to remember them, so you will be told, but they are, they are not required to be remembered. A few of them, of course, you should know. Like carbon, you should know. Oxygen, you should know. Sulfur. Yeah, but of, most of them are double it. Yeah, most of them, they are double or near the double. 
So we were finding the ratio of the atomic masses. Now these are compounds. They are also called as compounds or molecules. We also call them as compounds or molecules. So what are compounds? When atoms are combined in a fixed ratio by mass. So when atoms of different element elements combine in a fixed ratio by mass. Fixed ratio by mass. So we call them as compounds. They are compounds. So here we observe that carbon dioxide, wherever you will find carbon dioxide, so in a, in a molecule or in a compound of carbon dioxide, you will always have carbon and oxygen joined in the ratio of mass that will be 3 ratio 8. From wherever you take that carbon dioxide, you take it out of the plant, you take it out of the atmosphere, you take it out anywhere. Carbon dioxide... Carbon, carbon 12, any type of carbon. That will be coming, just wait. We will come to the isotopes. That is in the next chapter, when we discuss about the isotopes. Okay, so this is clear to everyone? Compounds and molecules? Okay, then now we have molecular masses. We have molecular masses. So, what are the molecular masses? See, when uh, if as we saw that if we have a molecule of carbon dioxide, so molecule of carbon dioxide it always has carbon and oxygen, right? So, if you calculate the uh, mass of this carbon and oxygen taken in atomic mass unit. Like carbon has atomic mass of 12 AMU. This we call as atomic mass unit. Oxygen has atomic mass of 16. So the total molecular mass, if you calculate the molecular mass, it will be equal to 12 plus 16 times 2. So this will be 12 plus 32 which makes it 44. Okay. So the molecular mass of carbon dioxide is 44 AMU. AMU stands for atomic mass unit. So what is atomic mass basically? If you compare this atomic mass unit, it's not gram, it's not kilogram. Okay. So uh, as we see that in our daily life, we are using kilograms and grams. So those kilograms and gram we are taking as a comparison. Like if you compare the mass of a substance with one kilogram and the mass of that substance taken as one kilogram, that means if you compare it with a kilogram, it will be just equal to one kilogram. If you double it, it will be two kilograms. So in the similar way, atomic mass unit, it is the atomic mass of one twelfth. It is equal to one twelfth of mass of carbon twelve atom. If you take a carbon-12 atom, then 1 12th of its mass is equal to 1 atomic mass. So here I am giving you a few questions. You are supposed to calculate their molecular masses. Okay. So Siddhi Sri, Aman, everyone will calculate the molecular masses of the molecules given here. You can take the data. You can take the help of the data of your book. For, or I will be giving you over here 
carbon has atomic mass of 12, hydrogen has atomic mass of 1, and oxygen has atomic mass of 16A. You need to calculate sugar, C12H22O11. Just the math. Yeah. So first one is one eighty. Is So the second one is five forty two. Second three forty two. Sir, the first one is 180, right? Yeah, first one is 180. So, is the second one 342 or 542? Uh, uh, whatever you are getting. Everything is glitching for me. I, was... no, 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 I, I cannot can... see. Yeah, you correct. can't see. Okay, so if anyone uh, is swapping out, Tell your answer in the chat section. Okay. Send it directly to me through the chat section. No, sir, I cannot. Yes, I don't second, sir. Okay, you can't see. Uh, is it clear for everyone or everyone is? Yes, sir. Time? Zoom is lagging for me. So how much is K? Is yes, the same sir. problem with everyone? Yes, Abhinav, yes, you are also having the same issue? No, sir. How much is potassium? Sir? Like, yeah. Potassium? So I think okay. it's like 39.09. Okay, so you take it 40. Okay, okay 0, 09 is 30, 39. Potassium is 39. Okay. And sulfur is 32, phosphorus, what is the atomic mass of phosphorus? So phosphorus is 30.9. 31. I will be checking everyone. Just solve it. So can you just show how can we solve? Okay. Who is this? Siddhisri? Yes, sir. Okay. So which one? Siddhisri, I will be telling anyone. So which one do you want me to solve? Which one do you think you... Let sir, me... third one. Third one. See, uh, K2SO4. Okay, so let's see K2SO4. Okay. Now the molecule, atomic mass of potassium, K is 31, sorry, 39. Yeah, Siddhisri? Yes, sir. Okay, so we write here 39, but there are two atoms. It's K2, so there are two atoms. Therefore, we multiply it by two. So this is the mass of potassium which is present in this compound. Plus there is sulfur. So the atomic mass of sulfur is 32. Okay. And there is only one sulfur. So I will write 32 multiply 1. Plus 
Atomic mass of oxygen is 16. So I multiply 16 by 4 as there are 4 atoms of oxygen. <coughs> so can you solve it now? Sir, for one minute, can I open my camera? Yeah. Rikshit? Yes, sir. Turn on the camera. Sir, Karen just went off. I'm on my phone right now. I'll turn it on in five minutes. Okay. I didn't join quite late. So, no, sir, I was there before. Uh, just five minutes back, current was gone. So, then I joined okay. back right now. Okay, fine. <laughs> So for calcium, uh, I think... 40, 40. So it's 40 or something? 40. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so everyone has solved. No, sir. Okay. Did this three have you understood how to make how to uh, find out? Me is uh, thirty, right? Which one? Twenty two, twenty three. Where is twenty two? Sir, I'm asking about uh, sodium. It's twenty three. Okay, sir. Sodium is twenty three. Okay, let's check out the answers. Everyone has, has got the answer. I'm yes. giving you another two minutes. Yes. 
Okay, Pranaya has sent all the answers. Okay, anyone else who has been able to solve? Sir, I solved. I'm just typing the answers. Okay. Sir, I solved, but I'm not sure. Okay, when you have, if you have solved, just uh, send the message in the chat section. Send it uh, privately to me, directly to me. Don't send to everyone. Sir, I sent it. Okay. So there are six people who have sent, I think. Harini has sent. Prince sent. Okay. Sir, I'm sending. Yeah. Prana has sent. Only three people. Sir, I'm sending. Okay. So what is the question? You have to find the atomic uh, molecular masses of all the molecules. Sid this three? Sid this three? have you been able to calculate anyone? Okay, so I'm you can see here. I'm telling you the answers, or if you have with you, just tell it C6H12O6. This is 180. Okay. Atomic mass unit and C12H22O11. What is this mass? 342. It's 342. For K2SO4? 174. 174. For H2O, it is 18. Yes. For H2O2, it is 34. And for H3PO4? 88. 88. 88. No, I think it's 98. Yeah, so even I got 98. Okay, it's 98. And so how do we calculate this? Uh, who is this asking? Rikshit? Yes, sir, Rikshit. So I had told you over here as one of the examples. See? K2SO4. So how do you know that K has is 39 or something like that? Oh, so that, that we have given here. See here the list? It's already provided to you. Okay, so one minute, let me note it down. H2O is uh, 34. Yeah. Uh, 32. 32. Fourth. Which one? Fourth one. H2O. Yes, sir. It's 18. 18. Check it once more. It's 18 only. H2O is 18. Then calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate. 
How much? Hundred. Hundred. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, anyone who is getting hundred for calcium carbonate? Okay, I got hundred. Hundred. Okay, so I need to check. I I can't verify this. Okay, this was forty plus twelve plus forty eight. Okay, and sixty. It's it is. Isn't that eighty? Oh, it's hundred. Then you need to get calcium hydrogen carbonate. One sixty two. One sixty two. Sodium hydrogen carbonate is 84. 84. And HNO3 is 63. 63. Right? So I hope everyone has understood today that how can we calculate the molecular masses of the compounds. Yes, sir. Okay. Bye, everyone. See you again. Thank you, Tomorrow. sir. Tomorrow. Okay, bye. bye. Yes, sir. Bye.